Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're taking you guys through a complete beginner's guide to Microsoft Word. Our goal was to include everything that you need to know about Microsoft Word to use the program effectively. And so this video may be on the longer side, but we hope that you can find a lot of value out of it. Be sure to stay tuned as we will also be dropping intermediate and advanced lessons on Microsoft Word in the future. Before we get started with the video, if you guys are interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows Server, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll leave those links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so I am currently on Windows 11 on my desktop and I'm going to hit the start menu here and I'm going to go ahead and type in Word and I'll press enter to open the application. If you don't already have Office installed, we have a full tutorial on this and you can watch it right here. OK, so before we get into making and modifying documents, let's go through the menu system a little bit. So this is what we're met with on our home page. Now, depending on what version of Word that you're running, this may look a little bit different. However, Word has stayed pretty much the same for the last several years with minor improvements and tweaks. And most of the updates have centered around making the application more modern in appearance. So no matter what version of Word you're on, this tutorial should still be helpful for you. OK, so we have home at the top. This is our navigation pane. Below that, we also have a new tab. This is where we're going to find additional options such as templates. And we'll come back to this a little bit later. Below that, we have a tab called open. This tab is going to give us quick access to previously created or used documents. So if I want to open a document that I've already been working on, I might find that from the open tab. And then at the very bottom here, we have account and we have options. Let's start off in the account tab. Here I can switch my office license if I would like to. I also have update and Microsoft 365 options. Here we can also find add-ins and about Word. And then on the left side under user information, we can manage our privacy settings. We can change the background. And then I can also change the theme. So for example, it's on dark gray right now. I could change it to white if I would like to or colorful. I'm gonna keep it on dark gray as that is the theme that I prefer. All right, so that is a basic tour of the menu system and it's pretty easy to navigate overall. Let's go back to the home tab here and let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so we have a new section. This is gonna give us a few templates here and then we also have the blank document option, which we might use in a lot of cases. Now, if I click more templates, it's basically gonna bring us back down to that new tab that we were showing you guys earlier. And from here, we have some available templates or some suggested templates, but we could also search for a template. For example, let's say I wanna make a new resume. I could type in the word resume and hit enter, and it's gonna search for various different templates that we could use and start editing directly. We can search for anything that we would like in here as there are a wide variety of templates that will come up. Now for the purpose of today's demonstration, let's go ahead and start with a blank document. Okay, so once inside of my document, my cursor will automatically be at the top left-hand section of the page. Another thing that we're gonna notice is that we now have various different tabs that we can navigate to, and this is going to give us access to different tools that can help us to compose our document. So at any time, if we wanna go back to that menu at the beginning, we're gonna find that in the File tab. And if I would just wanna go back to the document, I can hit this little back arrow here. The next tab is going to be our Home tab. Now this is called Home because most of the common tools that we're gonna be using throughout the composing process will be here. So most of the time, in all likelihood, we will be on the Home tab. And so this is a good place to get familiar with. When you first start using Microsoft Word, it's going to automatically create what's called groups. OK, so we have tabs here and then underneath the tab, this is called a ribbon. The ribbon is this section of tools that spans across the entire top of the application. And then they're separated by these little lines that we like to call groups. The way that Word is designed is to keep all of the relevant tools together so that you can use them in an effective way. All right. So just exploring this, we have the clipboard group. This is going to give me things such as paste and format painter. We also have direct access to the clipboard. This next one here called file. This is one that I actually custom created in settings, and we will touch base on that in our intermediate video. Next up, we have font, and this is going to give us font size, font selection, and all of the other character adjustments that we can make, including bold, italic, underline, and highlight. Next up after that, we have a paragraph group, and this is going to give us things like bullet points. We can select numbers, indentations, and then we can also change our alignment. Next Next up, we have styles. So here we can basically select preset heading styles. For example, if I want to make a title and then a heading and then a subheading, I can select this and it will apply that style to whatever I'm typing. All right. And then after that, we have editing. And here we have find, replace, select. 
and we have add-ins as well. So we're gonna be exploring mostly the home tab in this video, but we will also briefly touch on the other tabs. All right, guys, so for the purpose of demonstration today, I'm gonna to be creating a videography service agreement. I'm gonna type this out as if it was an actual agreement so you guys can see how I'm formatting the document and how I use Word to easily compose it. So the first thing I might wanna do in this case is write a title. And what we're gonna do is as we create this document, we're gonna explore some of the various different tabs here that we can come back to. I'm just gonna type in videography service agreement, okay? And then if I either click and drag to highlight this or I can triple click, I'm gonna select one of the styles up here. And for the title, I'd like to use strong. And I'm gonna increase the font size here. Let's say I wanna go up to 14. One thing I may actually wanna do here is capitalize this. All right, and then I'm gonna press enter to start a new line. I went ahead and typed out some of the first agreement terms. Now, one thing I may wanna do here is bold the names and dates. So if I select these, I don't have to go up here and press this little B button because we have shortcuts in Word that are automatically going to be in place. So control B or command B if you're on Mac is how we're gonna bold that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bold the company name. I'll bold my name as well. I'll bold videography, which is my fake company in this case. Since we have some initial text typed in here, let's cover a few other things that we could do if we want. So let's say I select this line here. If I wanna make this italic, I can either press the little I here or I can do control or command I. That's for italic or italicize. And then the same thing for underline is U. So control or command U. We could also access that right here. If I hit this little icon, it's going to cross out lines. So this can be helpful when modifying or revising documents. And then another one you might use commonly here is text highlight color. So if I hit that, we can highlight it. And if I wanna change it to a different color, I can do that by hitting this little arrow. So there we go. And then if I don't want it to be highlighted anymore, let me go ahead and select it again and we can just change this to no color. Earlier, I wanted to make this all caps. If I wanted to make this lowercase again, I can simply hit this right here and let's hit sentence case. Okay, and now we can see the first letter is capitalized. I could also change this to capitalize each word. Or if I wanna go back to all uppercase, I could do that as well. Now, if I wanted to change the alignment of the text, for example, I have this in the middle, I can hit this little icon here, which kind of shows me a preview of how the text will line up. I could put it on the right, I could put it in the middle, or in this case, I actually wanna keep it on the left. Now I can also select all of my text again. Another way I can do that is by hitting Command or Control A. Okay, so that's select all. And if I want to, I could increase my line spacing here. So we can go 2, 1.5, 1.15, uh, or we could actually custom space it right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it at one for now, but good to know that that's there. All right, guys, so I went ahead and typed out my next line here, which is services provided. Now, let's say I want this heading or this title, the formatting to match this. We have a tool that we have called there's a tool we can use called Format Painter. So let me go ahead and select my title and then I'll click Format Painter. Now, if I click and drag over what I want to be formatted, it's going to format it just like this, which in this case was just the bold. And then again, I could come up here and uppercase this. And so now we have our first heading here matching our title. So now we have our number one services provided matching our title. Now, another thing I might wanna do here, underneath filming details, I'll probably want this to be bullet points. So to do that, I'll just click the bullet right here and I can basically click in front of each line here and click this icon. And then if I have another line item, for example, post-production, all I have to do is hit enter and it's gonna automatically make a new bullet point. Now, if I hit enter twice, it will bring me back to essentially not having bullet points. We could do the same thing with numbers as well. Okay, there's a few other things we wanted to cover here on the home tab. So we've covered the styles, we've covered the font paragraph sections, we've covered the format painter. Another thing we have access to is the clipboard. So if I click that, we have items that we could paste that we copied earlier. So for example, if I copied 10 different things in the last hour, and maybe I wanna paste one of them because I'm frequently having to paste that exact same line, I don't have to go back and copy it again, I can just grab it from my clipboard here. We could also clear this or paste all. And another thing we wanted to cover on this side is the editing. So if we want to replace or select, the most common one that I'm gonna be using over here is find. I can also access find with control or command F. So if I click on find, it's gonna pull up this little navigation thing where I can basically search for words or characters. Let's say I wanna find anything that says videography. So I'll search videography and I'll hit enter. And then here I can quickly navigate to the different parts of my document that say videography, or I can actually see that it's highlighted on the page. Now I can X out of this and clear that and close this at any time. 
All right, let's go ahead and keep working on our document. Let's go over to the insert tab. Now here we have a lot of different options and this might feel overwhelming at first, but this is actually very, very simple. We have a few things here. We have page breaks. So we can insert a blank page or a cover page or a page break. So for example, if I want this page to be done and I wanna start typing on the next page, here we can hit what's called a page break and that'll bring us to the top of the next page. One shortcut that I like to use a lot is Control Z or in your case, Command Z. If I just hold Control and keep hitting Z, it will undo the previous action. And so now I'm right back to where I was before I added the page break. All right, so we've covered what we can do here. We also have a table. So we could insert a table and by hovering on this, I could, for example, do a four by two or a two by four. However many cells I want, I can select that and insert the table. We also have options such as insert, draw, or Excel spreadsheet here. So very quick and easy way to add a table. Next up, we have pictures. We have stock pictures online or from this device, so local pictures. Okay, and then we have shapes, icons. Here we can see the icons are stock images that come up in their own window. And then we have 3D models and various other options as well. For example's sake, I'm gonna show you guys how to add a picture. Let's go from this device. All right, and let's say I wanna grab a film photo here from a production that I did recently. So I can go ahead and click on it and I'll click insert. All right, and then I can either approve or I can edit the image. I can also resize by clicking and dragging on any of these points. So if I do that, it's going to squeeze it. But if I grab one of the corners, it will maintain the aspect ratio and I could drag that down. And let's say I like that, so I can go ahead and approve that. Okay, and then if I click edit here, we have a few options in terms of the borders. We can change the transparency, add color or corrections. For now, I'm gonna leave the image as is. Just note that you can make changes here and I will actually resize it a little bit. I'll say right about there is good. All right, and then I can select this and move it or I can hit the backspace key if I wanna delete it. Now, another thing that we can insert here are links. Again, we have a shortcut for that as well. Let's say I want to hyperlink professional videography and post-production services. I can add local links, so links to local documents on my computer. But if I wanna send this out to somebody else, I might wanna use a web link. One example I might use a hyperlink for is I have a PDF that I send my clients when booking video services, and that's basically a PDF proposal. And a lot of times it's gonna be uploaded to Google Drive, which means I can save a share link. And let's say I wanna link that in here if they want to reference that. So I can do Control K or Command K if you're on Mac. And we're gonna do existing file or web page, and then we can type the address or paste the address here. And I'll press OK. All right, and then I can select that and do Command K again to adjust that if I would like to. Again, we can select local documents as well, but in this case, I will leave it as my drive link. Also on the insert tab, we have headers, footers, we have page numbers if we'd like to add that. Let's say I wanna add a page number to the bottom of the page. I'll go bottom right. There we can see we've basically automatically added a footer with a page number. And then we can also add comments. Let's say I wanna add a comment here. I'll select the text here and I'll hit comment. And I'm gonna to pretend to be the client in this case. And I'm gonna say, we only need six hours of coverage. All right, let me go ahead and hit this little blue icon here. So now if I'm reviewing the document again, I can basically see that this is highlighted. I can, and I can see that somebody left a comment that is relevant to what's highlighted. I can thumbs up it or I can also resolve it or delete it. We have additional custom things here that we can use such as quick parts. Quick parts would be like a title that we use on a regular basis. And then a text box here, we basically can add little sidebars or quotes. Now quick parts is pretty easy here. If we wanna utilize quick parts, I'm gonna select a part of the document that I want to easily be able to insert all the time. This is kind of similar to clipboard, but actually permanently saved inside of the application. If I hit quick parts now, I'm gonna hit save selection to quick parts gallery. I'll give it a title service agreement and I'll press okay. Okay, so now if I have a section here that I wanna add another header like this, I can just click that. And maybe I wanna change this to number two and I can start typing and it's already gonna be formatted the way I need. We also have other things like objects, date and time, signature line. So this is far from a complete agreement, but for example's sake, I just wanted to go ahead and finish off the document. So now it says signatures and I have some signature lines here and I need to create a space where people could actually write their signatures. Back on the insert tab, we do have an option for that called signature line and I can enter the suggested signer and their title as well. The suggested signer in this case will be myself, Gabe, and the title will be owner videography. Perfect. And then I can add an email address if I want to. All right, and then I'll click OK. As we can see, this created a signature line and I can actually move this 
down. So I want this to be right in front of the signature here. And maybe I just delete the text and just keep this, for example. Another way that we can do this on Word documents is simply just to hold shift and hit the hyphen key. So underscore, and then just hold that out. You can create your own custom line that way. Okay, so that's gonna be a lot of the functionality of the insert tab. Let's go ahead and cover some of the other tabs before we end the video. Here we have the draw tab, and this one's gonna be pretty basic. We have things that we can use such as eraser. We have a pen, so I can literally just click and draw on the document, and I can grab the eraser and erase that. And then we have different colors, so I have red here. I can erase that as well. Then I also have a highlight that I can use to just custom highlight it, kind of like I was drawing on a real piece of paper. Okay, and then we also have ruler, so we could use that to measure if we'd like to, and we could add rule lines or grid lines to our document here as well. Okay, in the design tab here, we have custom themes that we could pick from. These themes might give us coordinating colors or a different style with different fonts. We also have some document formatting templates that we could pick from as well. And then we could also just change the color scheme and fonts from here. We could also change the colors and fonts from here, and we could add things such as a watermark, page color, or borders. Okay, in the layout tab, we have specific settings for indentations. We can adjust our margins, orientations, size, etc. cetera. We, we can also access breaks from here, and we have some various arranging options as well. Next up, we have references. This is exactly what it sounds like. This is going to be for references. We're gonna cover this more in later tutorials. Here we have mailings. This is gonna give us tools that can help us get this ready for delivery, whether it be email or an actual physical letter. Here we have the review tab and we will actually cover this one just a little bit here. So if you send somebody a Word document and they open it and they select edit, they can basically go in here and they can hit what's called track changes. So if I enable this, we're now inside of the reviewing mode, which we can also access right here. Now, any changes that I make to the document, for example, if I change this from services provided to services provides for whatever reason, it's not going to actually make the change in the document, it's gonna make a suggested change. Okay, so as the reviewer, I could then go to this feedback. Let's say I wanna make a change here as well. Let's say I just wanna delete post-production entirely. Again, I'm just making random changes here just to show you guys how this works. I've tracked three different changes. Again, it's not actually changing the document. It's basically giving me an option when I review this, whether or not I wanna change it. So here I can select next and I can find the various changes that have been made in this document. And with them selected, I can either accept or reject. In this case, I'm gonna reject this one. Okay, and then here, maybe I wanna accept that. And I wanna reject this one as well. We're gonna cover this more in depth in future videos, but we just wanted to give you guys a glimpse of how we can utilize this feature. This is mostly going to be used when collaborating on documents. Now, a few other things we have here, we can show comments, we have languages and translation, we have some accessibility features, we have read aloud, and then we also have spelling and grammar and a word count as well. Next up, let's go to the view tab. Here we have various settings for how we can change our view, maybe in preparation for how we wanna finalize our document. Then we have a developer tab. We'll go over this one more in the intermediate or advanced tutorials. And then lastly, we have a help tab. So here we can contact support or we can access support threads online. All right, so once you're done with your document, either it's completely done and you wanna save it as a PDF and send it or upload it, or if you wanna save it as a Word doc and send it to other people so that they can go ahead and make suggested changes or revisions, all of that is going to be done from the file tab. So back in the file tab, now that we're working on our document, we have save or save as. And let's go ahead and click save as. Now, where we save our document is going to be very important for safety. We wanna save this somewhere that it's not going to be deleted if it's critical data. And so I'm gonna select, for me, I'm gonna select this PC and I'm gonna select Indigo Software, which is a local file on my PC, on my C drive. So I'll select that. And then let's say I want to collaborate on this document or I wanna keep working on it later. I'll just save it as a Word document. But if it's final and maybe I just wanna go ahead and email it to somebody, I might save it as a PDF. All right, and then let's go ahead and click save. Okay, and then here we can see the saved document as a PDF. Now, if I do wanna save this for future work as well, I'm also gonna save this as a Word document. So I'll go back to this PC, same folder, same title, and I'll save this as a Word document. All right, the last thing we're gonna show you guys is how to access this document in case you wanna come back to it and keep working on it in the future. So I can close out of this, and then if I pull up Word, Again, it's automatically gonna be here in my homepage. I'll just click into that and we're right back to editing our document.
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything we went over, feel free to drop those in the comments below and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll leave those links down below. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas to make. If there's a video that you'd like to see us make, please let us know in the comments below. And most of these requests actually get made into videos. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.